On Saturday night, when Golf Channel showed video of Bryson DeChambeau hitting balls under floodlights, Mike Shy chuckled as the Live From hosts made a big deal of his longtime pupil's devotion to getting better. That's nothing. Shy, who began coaching DeChambeau at age 12, has watched him do Rocky Balboa-type workouts. There was the time after DeChambeau failed to earn his PGA Tour card in 2016, playing on sponsor exemptions and had nearly a month to kill before the Corn Ferry Tour playoffs began. DeChambeau arrived back home at the Mike Shy Golf Performance Institute, headquartered at Dragonfly Golf Club in Madera, California, and declared he wasn't going to hit a ball for three weeks, but rather was going to revamp his swing plane by spending at least four hours a day on the Shy Circle, a swing plane trained device engineered and built by Shy until his hands bled. He did it for three weeks, alternating between swinging a heavy rod and a golf club. He put a cover over the range balls. If he wasn't going to hit range balls, guess what? No one else was going to either. Shy recalls, who else would do that? Hitting a golf ball is a drug and a fix for him. And to give up his fix and make his motion what he wants it to be, well, Bryson is obsessive compulsive. You can't stop him. If he means going all night, he'll go all night. He's always been that way. I'm going to go to the range until I'm comfortable and then we can go play Fortnite. The coda to this story, DeChambeau won the DAP Championship, the first Corn Ferry Tour playoff event, and was off and running en route to winning the 120th U.S. Open on Sunday at Wing Foot. The truth is, it wouldn't have been a story if Bryson hadn't beat balls after Saturday's third round under floodlights. I told everybody on Thursday that he would win. Shai says shortly after DeChambeau holed out for a final round three under 67 and six stroke victory over Matthew Wolf. Bryson called me on Tuesday and told me he'd figured something out. Not to tell me thanks for the help because that doesn't happen. But he found something and I watched him play the first three holes and I knew he was going to win. Shy watched the broadcast from home as DeChambeau validated all their hard work. He considered flying to New York before the final round, but there were too many hoops to jump through in the age of coronavirus. While Shy has taken a backseat in recent years to instructor Chris Como, who is based at Dallas National Golf Club, where DeChambeau practices when he is home, Shy remains one of his closest confidants, and their journey from Shy's tent, where he has hundreds of gadgets and training aids, to major winner has been one strange trip. When he was 12, 13 years old, he was spending every waking hour with me at the tent. I'd never had anyone like him or at, quote, that level, Shai says. Even at an early age, we were talking swing theories that he wanted to try and test. That was an element that was important to our journey. Decisions and choices have consequences, so there could be some bad golf. As long as he was willing to accept that, we could experiment and cross some things off. When we went to one-length clubs and a one-plane swing, everyone thought we were super crazy. Not just crazy. They said it wasn't going to work. Work. He wasn't going to get a golf scholarship, but the more we went down the rabbit hole, the more it was making sense and you could see how accurate he was becoming and the control he gained over the ball. It was a lot of work and I always tell him, don't discount all the work you've done. Shy always knew DeChambeau was capable of achieving extraordinary results in professional golf and encouraged him to do it his way. But he also warned him that marching to the beat of his own drummer would bring with it a host of doubters. We were in a car in LA and talking about the future and I told him, you have to understand one thing, you could be the number one golfer in the world, win several PGA Tour events, win a major, maybe even two, and people are going to still think you're crazy, that this doesn't work. Whether it is the clubs, your swing, your mannerisms, there are going to be doubters. Shai says, I told him I'm a golfing machine instructor. There are 13 million swings, so pick one and trust it's the right way for you. You have to own this 100% because there are going to be people who are going to crap on you every day. And they did. There have been rough times, but that's all part of the journey. Even now that DeChambeau has achieved the ultimate validation in winning a major, Shai doesn't expect DeChambeau's triumph to inspire a revolution of followers rivaling that of Tiger Woods winning the 1997 Masters. Not immediately anyway. It will take time for DeChambeau's principles to be accepted. Do I think it'll change? I do. I think people will view what he's done and say, I need to evaluate it. Even after today, they're probably going to say, eh, that worked for him, but that's it, Shai says. There will eventually be a groundswell, and it will happen over time. Shai still isn't sold on the DeChambeau diet and the way he is bulked up, but he trusts DeChambeau's team of experts who treat him like the elite athlete that he is. He's a beast when he works out, Shai says. Hitting bombs was always part of the plan. We used to say that we want to be like Jack Nicklaus. We want to hit it to the moon and have it land soft, Shai says. 
but he argues that's not what has made DeChambeau into a major champion. Shai says DeChambeau has become such a dramatically better putter. He remembers the time in January 2018 when DeChambeau snapped his putter and dragged it behind his car to teach it a lesson after a particularly frustrating performance at the Farmers Insurance Open. I don't know if I ever believed that he would be one of the best putters in the world, he says. At an early age, Shai recognized that DeChambeau's inquisitive mind was one of his greatest assets. He's never been afraid to go down a rabbit hole test something new and different and challenge the status quo. He's been that way since he was a kid, Shai says. For him, the more numbers he has, the better he feels. Give him 100 numbers and he's happy. Give him one and tell him you're not sure about the others and he'd rather shoot you. People don't understand that about him. It's about feeling comfortable. For him, the more information he has, the better he feels. As for DeChambeau's many quirks, Shai shakes his head and says, we call it the Bryson way. Now the Bryson way is major championship proven. Validating? Sure. But the mad scientist is far from shaking things up. He's already talking about a 48-inch driver and adding more bulk to his frame. He's going to continue to tinker and pursue greatness. That, too, is the Bryson way.